I literally just got back from a run and I'm like so buzzed that I have to live stream to bring myself back down to earth and that's partly what the title of this live stream is about. Just wait and see if anyone joins me live and it's a weird time to be live streaming. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Sarah, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in a long time. How's it going? I'm just taking my shoes off because you've been for a run and my feet are all fucking hot. So I'm just gonna give them some air bitches. Woo! Right, I wanna talk to you about, come on the goose, up you come. Come on, Bubaloo, up you come. There we go. Um, I probably look like shit. I just went for a run, I've got makeup down my face. Anyway, who gives a fuck? Right. Whew. So I've just been for a run and I was sitting on my couch like, I'm gonna tell you a story. So settle in, get your cup of tea and your popcorn because Mama Noel is gonna preach. Um, so I was, I've had the most amazing few days. I just felt like really pumped to just be alive and to be running my business and working with my clients and I've just been having an amazing experience of being alive. <laughs> and um, I don't know about you guys, but I wanted to come on and share this with you because I feel like I'm not the only one who this happens to. And so I want to share my story in real time so that you can see the impact of getting off your fucking ass and moving, basically. Um, and not falling victim to the bullshit fucking story that because you have anxious tendencies that you can't have an amazing fucking life, okay? Because that is a bullshit. And I actually, I'm inclined to believe that people who, I was gonna say suffer from anxiety, but fuck that. People who can be prone to having anxious feelings in their body and in their brain, I believe that we are incredibly creative, that we are almost not of this world, that we are so deeply connected to all that is, that we get anxious when we're out of alignment, when we're not doing what we're meant to be doing, when we're with the wrong people, when we're in the wrong energy space, when we're eating the wrong foods, what the fuck ever. Now for me, for the last few days, I've had the most, like I've been flying high, I've been so like, what some might call flow or super flow or the vortex or just high vibe or like whatever, right? I've just been in a state of joy and just reconnecting with all the stuff that makes me happy and taking ownership of how I'm feeling and doing things that make me feel good. And choosing, and this is the real key, I have been choosing self-belief. I have been choosing to show up online and in life in all areas as though I believe in myself. Now that might sound like a weird thing to say because you might be thinking, well, you either believe in yourself or you don't. But it is not that simple. It is not that black and white. Self-belief isn't something that you just like suddenly get gifted or get a certificate and suddenly you just fucking believe in yourself all the time. It doesn't work like that. Self-belief is something that fluctuates. It's something that is, you know, cyclical or like a wave or whatever, right? Hey, Leah. Um, nice to see you. Happy Saturday. I mean, what are we doing? Saturday night, I'm staring at our phones. But anyway, I need to share the joy and help people feel better. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I was just feeling like really excited about life, really good, everything was lining up, just feeling really fucking awesome. And then today, I had a mo like, again, amazing client today, went for a run, did a live stream for um, my friend, Dr. Katie Henry. If you've never seen her work, you should check her out, she's fucking amazing. Um, she is like proper, the real deal, fucking, epically gifted and talented and an amazingly beautiful human being. And um, I did a live stream for her and her group using tapping and it was just magical and everything just feels so flowful and felt so easy and beautiful and like everything was just working out. And then, how then do I end up on Saturday mid-afternoon eating shit for dinner <laughs> and then eating half a tub of these fucking things and a massive family-sized bag of crisps. 
how the fuck does that happen when I've been flying high, happy as a motherfucker, why would somebody binge eat and binge watch Netflix? And I'm gonna tell you the truth here. I was a fucking bubbly snot mess because I've been watching Queer Eye for Straight Guy and I fucking love that show. But the issue is that when there's like anyone who is in some kind of transformation or having, you know, having their life changed and stepping into this like awesome new energy or like when, you know, just like any of those award shows for like heroes and all that stuff like that just makes me fucking bubbly snot cry and that's not necessarily a bad thing but it's not a good look on someone um at half five in the afternoon whilst they're binge eating and just generally bubbly snot crying and there was a time when i would have just gone oh this is just something that's happening that i have to see it through and i'll probably just feel really shit afterwards and hey michelle nice to see you girl um and it'll, you know, it'll just be something. I'll just binge and I'll binge watch and I'll feel like shit and I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll, it'll be a fresh start tomorrow. And the amount of times in my life, in fact, this might be one of like three times in my life where I've actually gone, no, no, change the record, <laughs> like seriously. And been able to catch myself like in the middle of the behavior. And so I was sending a message to my mentor just saying like, this has happened and I don't know what's going on and... When I look back through my day, I could pinpoint the exact moment that this started. And it started when I went on my run, because I run with my tiny little sausage dog, God love him. And we ran around the reservoir yesterday and it was pretty hot, so he was pretty fucking tired. And then, hey, hey, another Michelle. They're all on. Welcome, welcome. Um, uh, uh, uh. Fucking dehydrated because I've just been for a run, which is why I'm kind of slightly shiny. This is not highlighter, this is sweat. <laughs> Welcome to the glamorous no show. Um, and so, because I run with my little sausage dog, he was tired from having run yesterday, but I had to take him with me because he hates being left at home. And anyway, you don't need to know all of the becauses, but I took him with me. And because we ran again today, like he was sniffing and he was slowing down. So I had to put him on the lead so that I could actually run. And it was just, it was really stoppy starty. And I couldn't quite get into that place. But I don't know if any of you run or whatever kind of exercise you do. It's like some days it just flows and it's just like a beautiful experience and it elevates you and you feel so good. And other times it's like you leave going, I don't feel like I really got what I needed from that workout. Mm -hmm. um, let me know if you even know what that feeling is like, if you feel that too. But um, my little sausage, bless him, he just wasn't up for it today. And I was just so mindful of the fact that I didn't want to break my dog. So I never quite hit my stride of just being able to like flow and be in my body and with the movement and just be meditative with the movement of running and when I look back through my day like that's the point when the flow kind of started to get jarred and it just felt like from that moment on anything I tried to do to like okay flick the switch right being mindful and making choices that would normally be something that would flip me into flow it just wasn't working and I was trying everything I could think of and in the end I came downstairs and I was just like, I basically just given up on even trying and I had resigned myself at that point to today's just not going to be one of those days. But I had committed, hey Lou, nice to see you on live, girl. So your artwork on Instagram looks fucking amazing, so proud. Um, and so I came downstairs and I did all the binge eating and the crying and the watching of the Netflix and crying over reality TV, which is so not a good look on anyone, let's be honest, unless it's RuPaul's Drag Race, in which case you better be fucking crying because those bitches work. <laughs> fucking love that show. Oh my God. Um, but my point is, there's always a point. You may have to extrapolate it from the rest of the words, but there is always a very important point to my live streams. <laughs> I promise, <laughs> apart from just the mild entertainment value, hopefully, and how good my hair looks today. I hope we can all spare a moment for that. But when I found myself kind of being like witnessing myself and talking to my mentor being like, oh yeah, I, my run didn't quite work out today and that's why I'm feeling like weird. And 
I noticed that like my heart was moving a bit fast and that I was actually experiencing a little bit of borderline anxiety. And I just thought, well, am I really going to allow myself to just get sucked into this? And sometimes, like I did a live stream the other day about, you know, like leaning into how you feel. And with this, it just felt like I had, I had created the anxiety because I had not stayed committed to alignment. I had fallen out of alignment by making shit food choices and just doing things like watching TV that was making me sad. Like, why was I doing that when I wanted to remain high vibe? So I kind of kicked myself in the ass and lovingly, might I add, because all of my butt kickings to you and to me are all done with huge respect and love. Um, so I decided to put my trainers on, get into my sports gear and go for a little run with the dog. And we just did probably like about a mile, a mile and a half, something like that, like really not that long. But it was that moment of putting my headphones in and committing to go for a run that reminded me of who I am. It reminded me that I can choose in any given moment how I get to feel. Um, I can choose to shift in and out of different emotions and I can choose whether or not I get, I am a victim to how I feel or whether I'm gonna consciously create what I'm experiencing as my life. And so I wanted to come online right now because obviously I've literally just done that. Hey Gemma, isn't it your birthday today? What are you doing watching a live stream on your birthday? What was that yesterday? <laughs> I mean, if it is your birthday, happy birthday. I'm very happy to have you on board. <laughs> I feel honored. Party popper. Um, but yeah, it's just, I wanted to come on now because I've literally just, I mean, I got in from my run and I grabbed some water. I set my phone up and I was like, right, I have to tell the people because I think we get so caught up. Oh, happy birthday, Gemma. Welcome, welcome. Happy birthday to you. Um, yeah, we get so caught up in the energy that's in our body and sometimes we forget that we can shift out of it. And I almost wrote off the rest of today just because it was like, I looked at my watch and it was like seven o'clock or half seven or something. And part of my brain actually said to me, it, it told me this bullshit of, oh, well, it's like half seven. You should probably be winding down for the day now. Oh, what the fuck? Half seven? What am I, 85? I'm 35. Why do I need to be winding down at half seven in the evening? It's such a load of shit. I haven't got children to get to bed or anything. Like, it's literally just me at home. My boyfriend's out playing in his band tonight. It's just me and the dog and Netflix. Like, <laughs> who gives a fuck if I'm wired as fuck until like half 11? It doesn't matter. So... We make up all these rules for ourselves and they're so insidious and sneaky that we don't even know that we've done it half the time. And if I hadn't caught myself in that lie of, oh, I have to make sure that I take care of myself and don't go out, I'm more likely to have a higher quality of evening experience <laughs> if I go for a run and shake off whatever shit was bothering me. And there wasn't even anything specific that was bothering me. It was purely because I had been so high that I had subconsciously felt the need to ground myself and I did it with food, right? So when I stepped outside of the door, I walk for a little bit so that the dog can do all his sniffing and wheeze and poos and whatever else he's got to get out of his system before we can run so that we can just concentrate and kind of get our little groove on. And so whilst we were trotting along, he like pulled me. He may only be small, but he's a strong little fucker. He like pulled me over the side of the road. I was like, whoa. And there was this beautiful long brown feather from a pheasant and it was all stripy, just beautiful. And so immediately, me being me, I was like, what's the meaning of a brown feather? Let me look this up on spirit.com or whatever the fuck. Featheredmeaning.com. And it said that a brown feather is a symbol of grounding and spiritual re spiritual realization and needing to merge the physical and the spiritual and but the main thing was about grounding and i just thought how fucking cool is that like the, the universe is sending me signs that i'm on the right path that i've made the right decision i've never seen a feather like that just lying on the road i'm sure they do but i've never had my attention drawn to it and the fact that heinz like yanked me over the road <laughs> to go and sniff it it was just like, 
Hmm. You can choose to see these things as coincidence or you can choose to see them as something that, you know, is like a message from the universe saying to you, you're on the right path, you've made the right choice, you're doing the right thing. And so I chose to see it as that because it felt aligned. And then I went for my little run and I just felt like all the rights, the lyrics that I put in the title to this are actually from Britney Spears song. <laughs> you know, what's a girl to do? And it's just such a great song because when those lyrics came on, I was like, fuck yeah. I'm not someone who's just happy to sit in the background. I'm not somebody who's happy to just sit on the couch and bubbly snot cry into their Saturday night. I am somebody who takes life by the balls or by the JJ if you're that way inclined, which of course I am. <laughs> Don't wanna go just around grabbing random balls. I guess I could grab my own JJ rather than other people's balls. Maybe, you with me? If there's anyone online who'd like me to, anyway, it's like, this is going off on a tangent. <laughs> I have no smut filter, this is my problem. <laughs> it's just balls and vajayjays. Why not? If I don't talk about vaginas on my live stream, it's not a success. Um, but I think the difference between people who become a victim to their anxiety and the people who see it as a gift in a way is that it's just a message from your body that something's not quite right. And so tonight, as I was finishing up my run and I felt so ex like just excited and alive and exhilarated and just like full, fucking buzzing with energy, I just thought to myself, fucking hell, I am so lucky that I get these anxious symptoms because without them, I would have just been normal. I would have just been sitting on the couch, eating shit, watching shit, right? So maybe your anxiety is actually a gift. And I'm not saying that so that you hold on to it and go, oh, I need to baby it. I'm saying that when it shows up, rather than seeing it as something that's attacking you or feeling victimized by it, what about just saying thank you, I hear you, and I'm going to do something about my situation? Or taking note of who you with when you start to feel anxious. What are you doing? What were you thinking about? What's happened in the lead up to this feeling of anxiousness? And starting to unpick it and just use it as a tool to learn more about yourself and more about your life. So that's my message for the night. If you are somebody who suffers with anxiety, don't feel like a freak, don't feel like a weirdo. There's nothing fucking wrong with you. It's just your body and your brain, your subconscious saying something is not right, something is out of alignment. And if you don't know what that is, then feel free to reach out to me because this is my this is my work, this is what I do. I help people figure out what the fuck they're meant to be doing on this planet. And then I help them put a plan in place and we do all of the good stuff to actually get you there. Don't forget I'm running a retreat next Saturday. So if you want all of this in your face um, for an entire day, that's why I let you have massages, because it's important to ground when you're doing this kind of spiritual work. And you can guarantee we're gonna be flying as high as motherfuckers. Um, so we will need to ground before we all go out for dinner and have all of the cocktails. <laughs> but yeah, if you're interested in that, then hit me up. I'm also opening up spots on my one-to-one -one program. So if you'd like to work with me more closely, feel free to jump into my inbox, say hi, tell me what you want. Let's work together. Let's do it. Amazing. Have an awesome weekend. Love y'all. Bye.